Hello everyone, and today what you're about to see is me trying to show you how hard it is for me to record one of my videos. Now unfortunately what you're going to see is an amplified version of that because this recording went awfully. I've had a lot of issues along the way on this recording. It's been a long time coming trying to just get to this point. There's going to be a lot of information coming at you very fast. It was so long, I'm trying to cut out all of the pauses, all the little stuff because of just simply how long it is. And I'm only going to be able to show you half of it in this video, which is everything up to the editing point. The editing is going to be in another video. I hope you can still find this entertaining. There's going to be some bad camera angles because of how zoomed in the camera is, but I hope you enjoy anyway. Let's get into the video. Hello everyone, and today I'm going to show you how I make my videos. I'm um, working with what I have. I don't have nearly the best equipment to work with. I have probably better than some people, but it's definitely not optimized for making the videos that I do. So I'm going to show you the difficulties of what it takes to make one of my videos. Let's start off with what I am working with. Um, the camera I'm using right now is this old Sony Handycam, I think. Hang on. Yes. It's a Sony Handycam. The other thing that I have to work with, the other camera I have to work with, is a Canon EOS Rebel T7. It's not the worst camera, but it's horrible for video because it stops automatically uh, around 10 minutes in, which has been one of the biggest pains of trying to align audio and stuff for post-processing. Because I record my audio through the computer here. Um, I have the just one of the basic PreSonus. I forgot what they're called right now, but... Yeah, it's one of the most basic ones that everyone gets, audio interfaces. Uh, and I have this laptop that I've had for a million years. It's so old and it's quite loud, honestly, but luckily it's not loud enough to get in the videos, at least uh, after it's been running for a little bit. Next, I have an Audio-Technica mic microphone that my uh, dad got me at some point when we got the, um, the uh, audio interface. This is a... Uh, Phantom Power, I think, cardioid microphone. Car cardioid condenser, actually. Okay. So, yeah, we have that, and then we have this microphone down here. It's basically an SM58. If it's not an SM58, I think it is. What the hell is wrong with this? Why is it stuck? God damn it. Yeah, so it's still a Shure, but it's not an SM58. 588SD. I don't know. This is what I've been using to record most of the things. As you can tell, it's pretty beat up. Most of the stuff in this room are hand-me-downs from my father when he was a musician. So you may have noticed the big amp underneath the camera here when I was doing it. I actually wanted to use this thing, but uh, I think it's a tube amp, and it's but it's old. So I don't... It sounds really good, honestly, but it has some issues with the volume getting lowered plus the volume pot itself is quite fiddly not it's actually it's quite firm but the i think there's something wrong with the connections because even with this turned all the way down it's quite loud and when you just barely touch it then it gets super loud and goes back down real quick so it's quite annoying to try and work with although i did want to try and use it i don't know what's wrong with that exactly i don't know much about amp circuits honestly so, this is what we use usually. It is a crate. I have no clue. It's a crate 50 watt. Don't know what it's actually called. This is another hand-me-down. Same with that one over there. It's sitting on top of a CD case that has no CDs in it because I keep my CDs in the cases instead of... It doesn't hold cases. It only holds the actual discs. So I don't like it. Uh, at least I don't use it how it's actually meant to be. So, for the next video that I'm doing, I plan to do a reshoot because I had done a video on the Stax O-Drive 1 already, but I did not like how the tone turned out. And uh, yeah, so we're going to redo it and I'm going to run it through this Donner uh, Blue Looper, Blue Loop Station, and that's so we can get accurate results for when we start messing with the settings. That's pretty much everything that I work with. Um, let's get to setting things up. So yeah, the first thing that I did was I was experimenting with 
that amp over here didn't work or at least it has the volume drop so I can't use it so it's back it's over there it used to be over there now this one's back over here and I was experimenting with changing the equalizer because normally I have the equalizer completely flat so this is the EQ that works with the uh, gain channel I think I had this this toned back a little bit more with the just the clean channel which is what we obviously would use and the gain channel on this amp does not sound too awful great so since I moved this I had the microphone set up in a good place before but I switched it out and now it's probably messed up especially since I took it out and messed with it so what we have to do is we have to open the we have to open Studio One, which came with the PreSonus. Um, it's also what I know from my high school elective. So we have Studio One open here. This is my old O drive file. Let's make a new one so I don't overwrite it. Um, it turns out that this program is crashing right now, so that's cool. Also, sorry if the uh, camera is too zoomed in. I can't do anything about it because um, this old Sony cam has a... Uh, it has a, a not a wide angle uh, lens. It has the opposite, actually. It has a really zoomed in lens, and there's actually the reason for that, I think, is because there's a lot more room vertically. Because when you try and take pictures with this thing, it has a lot more room vertically, but it's in like 4x3 or something like that. So we're gonna make a new song. Damn it. I clicked on new song. I don't know what it's doing now. It was responding. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we gotta do this, we gotta name it. Okay, we'll make an empty song. Click on OK. Um, if it ever responds, it's... I really hate this laptop, it's too old. I don't hate it, but you know, it's too old to do stuff. So we gotta add some tracks. So we have the mic, and then we have a separate track for the guitar. So I like the color room completely differently. And we're gonna try and name it short. So we're going to name it GTR. This is probably not even worth showing, honestly. So now we have our two tracks. we got to make sure that we have the right ones lined up, or right ones recording in the right place. This isn't even plugged in. My, my studio mic is not plugged in. So I don't think anything is hooked up to our one down there. So we do this. So now we have it properly set up so that when I... When I bop on the, ca the the amplifier mic, oh my god, I'm falling. <laughs> when I when I bop the mic, the amplifier mic, it goes, and I don't have the studio microphone on. So we'll put some filters on that later. But um, for now, what we need to do is we need to change the mix knob to input because we want to hear what the input is, and we want to grab this cable right here because we are going to we are going to listen through headphones but we gotta plug it into my uh, speakers this is unfortunately gonna be a really janky recording okay so I got my headphones these are JBL lives I don't know what version these are I think they were around a hundred dollars I don't really remember these were also a gift at Christmas time like a year or two ago um, these things have been some of the best headphones for me because they actually are semi-accurate to the sound. Most headphones, even when they are, they are advertised as studio DJ mixing headphones, anything like that, they are extremely... they're boosted in some frequency usually, like really boosted. The past few that I've gotten were boosted heavily in bass as far as I know. It wasn't making farting noises. It might have been mid-boosted too hard, honestly, I don't know. Or it was mid-scooped. Either way, they were horrible. These things are pretty good. When my dad got that, they got the Audio-Technica microphone, it came in a kit, and the headphones that came with that thing were atrocious. They were the one, they were one of the ones they were the first ones I ever had the issue, and it drove me crazy when I was listening, trying to monitor my playing, kinda. It sounded really bad, and I was sitting there trying to mix in the thing, and then on my hardware, turns out it was the headphones that sucked ass. I don't know how to recommend headphones, because they... 
I, first of all, I don't have many. But yeah, these JBL lives are really good. So what we need to do is we need to put these on, we need to plug in, and we need to start listening to what the microphone is hearing or picking up as we play, and we need to try and find the most accurate spot uh, to put the microphone that sounds the closest to what's happening in the room. So the first thing we need to do is get a, is a good, get a good nice volume that we can hear it in, in the room. So I need to take these damn things off. We're going to be using the Squire uh, tele Stratocaster, almost messed that up. We're gonna use this for our sound. I also gotta tune up, but I'm sure that that probably won't matter for this. This part's where I get a little obsessed and or get distracted and just start playing. Since I'm recording, I'm hoping I'm not gonna get distracted, <laughs> but I probably will get upset with the tone I'm getting through the microphone. So we have a head we had a headstock tuner that we just used. We're all plugged in already, I think, so let's just turn it on. Alright, so that's a fairly decent volume for our clean tone. Let's turn the volume the level down on the pedal and make sure that we don't blow our ears out. We get nothing because the volume's down. Turns out where it was at was fine. So this is like my, pre my preferred tone coming from this pedal at the moment. So this is where I'm going to leave it for trying to recognize how it sounds. And we're going to make this a little easier on myself because I'm going to put something through the looper pedal and then, and then we're going to try and move the microphone around and listen in the headphones. speakers quite a bit, especially just to hear it over what's being played through the actual amp. So it looks like towards the top here actually sounds the most accurate because this pedal, because what I'm getting through the microphone is a lot more trebly and grainy than what I'm actually getting in the room here. So another thing that can help with that is you get more of the room sound if you back it off, but then again you're also losing bass frequencies depending on what isn't bouncing off the room and what you're not picking up from the room. because. Some of that gets lost here, at least that's how it works with the microphone that I have. It might function a little differently because it's not an SM58 exactly, or 57, I don't remember which one's which. One of them's for instruments and it has the flat top and one of them has the ball like mine. So now what we need to do is get the, is get the actual boom stand in the proper position to hold the microphone in position. That, 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 oh my God. I think that that one, that tone, should turn out much better than it did in the first video. So, now we have to move on to the next part. 
All right, so here we have a tripod. This is the one I usually use to hold the Canon camera. This is the one that I use to have the best picture on me when, while playing. Because for those who have watched my videos, they know that since the beginning, I have been trying to make sure that I have a pedal cam so everyone knows what settings I, have, I use to get what, whatever sound I'm using or getting. So we gotta start by screwing this on because this one doesn't have a detachable doohickey that is stupid and can get lost. I actually lost the one for the camera right that we're using to record right now. So I had to buy a couple more. <laughs> so another awesome feature of this Canon camera is that it first of all doesn't have a display. So right here the recording gets corrupted or something and jumps ahead. So I don't, and it's been a long time since I've recorded this, so I don't remember exactly what I was going to say. What I think I was going to say was that there's no way to be able to look at the screen of the Canon camera while you're recording yourself. Because there's no external camera port, or at least it's not easy to do, and they're expensive. And there is a, is an extern, there is an external app that you can use, but you can't use it while recording. You can only use it, you can't even use it to to center yourself pre-recording you can only use it to try and line up photos and then the other thing is that you can't do you, there's no external microphone inputs so that's awesome yeah there's just a lot to be desired in the video aspect of this camera but there's like weird restrictions on DSLRs or at least there was I think they might be either working on or removing them the restrictions on DSLRs. I don't know why they needed to have DSLR restrictions and those restrictions were only in Europe if I remember correctly. I don't know. It's a lot. But yeah, just wanted to explain to you because now it's going to jump ahead real far. Where it's about to jump to is right after I have aligned it. I have aligned the camera kind of to where I need it to be and gotten a basic focus based on a guitar strap that is sitting behind me that you usually see in the videos or you might be able to see. It's been a long time since I've been able to make a video, a proper video. And then I think on the shot I am using the photo mode to use to try and be able to make sure that I am in focus. The other problem with using the photo mode is that there's a different, I don't know if it's the aspect ratio or if it's just the zoom ratio, but when you're in the video mode, it zooms in a little bit more. So if you think you're perfectly in shot based on the photo mode, you are not. You're actually going to be cut off a little bit right 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 like right here and you're gonna be zoomed in a little and it's so annoying when that when that when that happens and i forget about it so just wanted to disclose that as well because you know love this camera well, now i sit on my stool and i look at my phone and i should be kind of in i should be mostly in frame i have to or i don't have to but i usually grab the guitar see if my guitar is going to be in frame properly what I should have done is I should have set up my microphone first and get it in place to make sure it's not in the way of that camera. So now I have to do that and re-go back in and look. So now I have to try and find a spot for, for my regular microphone. Love that this thing shut off on me too, but I had been recording for significantly longer than that stupid thing. Anyway, I don't even know what I was saying. So this is significantly closer than where it would have been over on the other side of the room. I need to figure out how I want to run the wire so I won't trip on it. What I'm thinking is I'm going to run it behind my chair because then there should be absolutely no way I should trip on it. And if I do, I might need to, I may need to consider hitting my ankle with a scooter. And then we have this little clip here. Um, this holds the wire and this clips around the body of the stand so that wires hopefully will not get in the way and start sprawling out to different places. Okay, so now we plug this in. Phantom power is not on. Now, what you want to make sure is you want to make sure that when you're plugging in and unplugging a phantom power microphone, you really should for any microphone just to hopefully be a good habit, but phantom power microphones do not like to be unplugged while phantom power is on. When you unplug it, you could have destroyed the whole thing. Luckily, I've done it a couple times on accident and it's lived, but you might not be so lucky. Um, I would probably do the same thing if it's on, probably don't plug it in. Mine is off. 
obviously. Yeah, just be aware of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see how it feels to pick up the guitar with that microphone kind of in the way. This is also too close. Now this is right in the middle of the room. If people needed to get in here, because my there's a closet that my parents go into, but they only go into it when I have things that need to not be moved. <laughs> this might be an issue, but we'll see. Um, with it farther back, more significantly, we should easily be able to grab our guitar without banging into things, which is the case. Now the other thing is me to actually listen to it, see how it sounds. Make sure I don't cover up my ears entirely, just in case. And since I plugged in my phantom power microphone, but I'm not powering it, there's a little ringing that's happening. Luckily it does go away when you turn it on. We turn on the phantom power or unplug the microphone. So I'm getting a little bit of echo, kind of, and I'm getting a lot of low end for some reason. I think it might be because of the room. It is very echoey. If I move it a little closer, let's see. So right now we're just getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of low end for my voice. My voice changes a lot and I'm not even, I should have passed puberty a long time ago. It depends on the time of day, how I'm feeling, and uh, whether or not I've actually drinking any water. <laughs> Today I have not. So I probably sound crappier or better. It's kind of an opinion thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mixed side, uh, the playback side of my of my audio interface and I'm going to see if it sounds any more different. It shouldn't because there's no effects on it. Actually it does sound quite a bit different, a lot better because it's, I guess it's just processed a little. It's also like a speech jammer when, I'm, when I can't hear myself and all I can hear is in the headphones because there's a slight delay which is why I try and get this all down without having to wear the headphones. So, it doesn't sound completely bad. Let me back the mic off and see how it sounds again. I think I like it better closer. Let me see how it sounds when I go down with it closer. And we're going to go over here. It actually sounds quite a bit better. I'm guessing because it is closer, even it's a lot closer when I'm down there, so it's closer in proximity to that whole situation. I think this is the microphone setup I'm going to go with, at least for this video. Um, I actually have to see how it work, how it looks on the Canon camera. I gotta see how much of how it's in the way. It shouldn't be in the way because I, because there's nothing over in this area. Okay, so it doesn't look like that microphone's going to be in the way too awfully bad. Um, another thing that I forgot to even think about was when I record. When I start trying to set up this camera to be the pedal camera, I have no idea how this bar is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be in the shot or how it's going to affect it. So that might be an issue, might not be. But for now, we have a, a couple, we have a couple filters to put on our, on our tabs here, or uh, tracks here. So for the guitar one, I like to have it as raw as possible, but I don't want it to clip exactly. Now, it would be nice to have an external compressor and limiter because if it clips on the input, there's nothing I can do about it. But we can stop it from clipping on the output. Um, and we might need a little bit of gain, but um, we can do. I won't. I don't put any gain on it in in the recording because I can put gain on it in post processing, which then will make sure that it doesn't clip. But you can still hear it properly. I also think I have bumped the microphone for that, so I'm going to have to do, record that again. Or I'm not going to have to record it, but I'm going to have to reset it up again. So, for the guitar, you just put a limiter. And I think I have a preset for the limiter for the guitar. Let me see. Oh no, I just have it as a preset in general. So I just have it set to negative one because that is the loudest that I want it to be. I want to make sure it doesn't get to zero, and especially not the pass zero. So we're not going to put any gain on it, so that's all we do for that. Now the voice, however, we want some, we want a limiter as well. And we do the exact same thing here. And then we add a some compression. So we add compressor, and I think I have a preset for vocals. Oh, I need to turn off my, I suppose I need to listen to it. I can hear the voice coming through my headphones. <laughs> wow. Oh. So there was 
14 decibels again, so that kind of hurt to listen to. <laughs> I'm gonna turn, I have to turn my my speakers down to a normal listening level so that I can hear it properly. Hear what it should sound like, um, you know, logically through an actual mix. Now, 14 decibels of gain is actually not nearly enough. Um, and I'm not even compressing, really. It's a very light compression. I think I might put, usually what I like to do is I actually have a light compression that activates a lot earlier and then a heavy compression that activates a lot later but it's something that I considered uh, experimenting with. So we're gonna start this at 16 with the threshold. We're just gonna do a two to one ratio and we're gonna, we're not gonna use the gain on this. We're gonna add some separate gain, um, like on the limiter. You can add a lot more gain. And I actually just realized I'm not hearing it properly because I'm facing completely away from the mic. How bad does this sound? How bad? Hey. Hey, this doesn't even transfer over to the video. But yeah, these are the basic these are the basic filters that I use. I don't want to use too many because you don't want to mess up what you don't want to mess up the interpretation and the process of getting from analog to digital. So that's all for that. And then the next step is going to be making sure that this thing sounds proper again and then adding one more thing to to this whole mess. I have to have this tripod over here, at least roughly over, this is this is actually gonna be an issue. So yeah, you can see that this will be an issue. That tripod is to look at that pedal. However, there seems to be a microphone stand in the way, but we'll deal with that whole process later. Okay, so now we only have a step or two left. The other problem is now, I don't have a whole lot of battery left on this camera. So I probably need to recharge it before I start working on my next thing, my, before I work on the next step. Assuming that nothing else gets moved, we can probably come back tomorrow or maybe in an hour or two. However, it is nine o'clock at night. If I could have just set all this up, it would have been fine. Uh, maybe, I don't know, whatever. Uh, I need to check how much battery is on the Canon full battery supposedly. What I'm going to be attempting to record this next part on is this little GoPro camera that I bought. It is a knockoff GoPro. Um, this is what I used as my pedal cam originally uh, in my very first few videos. It takes okay picture and video, however the audio quality is, a, is not great. It is pretty bad. And um, the angles might be bad on this because the only way to put this thing on a tripod of any sort is to put the case on, but then the audio quality is impossible. You can't hear anything because of the sealed case, because it's supposedly waterproof. So sorry if the next part looks bad. Hopefully I can get it done. <laughs> okay, so it's basically a week later now. <laughs> I, today, I am by myself in the house, so um, that means I have to also watch the dogs. So there's Allie, she wants to play ball. I know that was a horrible throw, because I'm not used to throwing, throwing with my left hand. And there was Nova. So yeah, I have to kind of try and keep track of them while trying to do this. And I have to make sure I redo everything because stuff was moved a little. We're going to be moving over to the little little camera that sucks. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a good angle on all of this or not. But we'll see.
Good girl. Good girl. microphone but I almost started recording but what I need to do first is I need to try and come up with something to put on the looper pedal that will demonstrate some maybe chugginess maybe some chords so you know you get full range of sound and then some solo notes so that you get a good representation unfortunately I would have to re-record it every time if I wanted to change what pickup it's on but you know it is what it is. Okay, so now we have to deal with the slight pain of trying to export all of the files. So to record the audio, I use a DAW software, and the one that I use is Pro... No, not Pro... Studio One. I think a lot of people who use DAWs don't like Studio One or something, but I don't care. I don't know, it came with my... Presonus uh, audio interface, so I mean, I'm just gonna use it, you know? When you export, there's two options, two main options for deciding where your song should start and end, and one of them involves markers. I don't know how to use those. So I just use the loop section. So you probably can't see much, but um, what you gotta do is you gotta go down to the slider and you gotta zoom it all the way out, or at least it makes it a lot easier. And then at the very start on the top, on your timeline bar, there's a little thing that you should really click and drag, and then select the whole thing. And then you want to zoom back in a little bit. Just to get the uh, thing as close to the end of your audio track as possible, you can leave a little extra on the end for like a fade out like I usually do. It usually doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, I also gotta save the project. Um, you gotta go to the song menu up at the top right here. And if you select export mix down, then it's going to compress to one audio file. If you select export stems, then you're going to get all of the tracks separate. So in this case, for my purposes, I like to export the stems because then I can audio, I can edit the audio of the, the guitar and the voice separately. I also forgot to get a thumb drive. 
this is not my main computer that I work on. This laptop is unfortunately far too slow. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, but it's an old, it's a pretty little old laptop. Not as old as it could be, but you know, whatever. It's old and it was, and it's been overworked and it's time. So, you know, I have to have a thumb drive to transfer the files from here over to the actual computer that I work on. Now we wait for it to recognize, of course. Okay. We also have to install a Windows update apparently. So we have the export range set to between loop. Um, we need to change the file export location because since it didn't have the drive selected, we have to select the external drive or thumbstick in this case. And then there's some other extra settings, but a lot of them aren't useful for whatever. Yeah, none of it's really helpful for what I need to do. So we're just going to export it and we're just going to let that go. So now we're going to go work on the actual Canon camera. Okay, here we are on my messy ass desk. We are going, there's a few things that you have to do before you can even try to plug in your your Canon camera for export. You have to turn it on, obviously. Um, you have to make sure that the setting is not set to any, it's not set to video, it can be any of the camera settings. And then you have to make sure that the Wi-Fi function is turned off. That took me a while to learn that you have to have all of those parameters before you can even attempt to uh, export. So you gotta turn it off and then you gotta plug it in using, you know, one of the cables. This is gonna be really difficult to do with one hand. It also, this camera does not help with trying to get proper angles because it, for some reason it's super zoomed in. Anyway, so on the side here you got a little rubber flip door. Can it ever focus? I hate this camera. Alright, so then you have a flip door. It's got uh, an HDMI port, a um, mini mi micro USB, mini USB, I don't know, and I don't even know what the hell that is. That might be useful in the future to know what the hell that is because I might be able to put like a microphone or monitor on it. So now it's plugged in but it's not turned on, so hang on, let me get a recording on the computer going because this computer connect is actually capable of that. So something happened that I don't have the original recording but I, uh, here's a basic walkthrough of what would have happened. Um, I plug in the camera, I turn it on, and then it, the computer recognizes that it's plugged in and you have all your settings correct on it, and then this menu pops up. This is the EOS Utility by Canon. Apparently it's the third one. I don't know if it automatically recognizes different cameras or if I downloaded a specific one. Um, I think it's specific, but I don't know. It says it right there. So, obviously, what we want to do is we want to download images to computer, and then you could could do an automatic download, but I don't even know what I have on here. So we're just going to select and download, because that's what I would normally do as well. So then it should bring up a new menu, like so. And here's some of the footage from the last shoot. So then, normally what you would do is you would grab all of these, you would just click them, or you could just do, there's a way to check them all. You could either click on this to check them all, and then you could download, and then it would have you select the destination, and then it would do it. Or you could uncheck it and select what you would want to download. Like, I wouldn't need this photo, because this I took at the very first shooting of trying to make this of trying to make the stacks video but uh this is like my second or third time trying <laughs> so i've the picture's still good so i can use that basically that's all that would happen and this is basically the same as it would have been back then because it's actually been a while since i've gotten to that point anyway hope that might hope that that hopefully that was informational and helpful so this concludes the filming portion of me trying to show you the difficulties of making one of these videos. Pretty much right after this, we're going right into the into the editing, except for there's a small story that has to happen before we can go into the editing because there was quite a lot of... This is where the main difficulties came in right before editing the video. So stay tuned for that. It should be coming up after the next review, but for now, I'm going to say bye bye